We thank you for your spirit leading and guiding us, Father. We thank you for who you are and all that you have done. You are so good, wondrous, awesome, so merciful. We thank you for your love, Father, that you've shown us in giving your only begotten Son, Jesus, to die so that we could live. And we thank you this morning he's not dead, but he's been raised from the dead in the same spirit that quickened and made him alive, has quickened and made alive our mortal bodies this morning. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for us. We thank you, Father, for this day and many blessings. I thank you for this group of people here. As we prayed this morning before this service, as we've covered this time in prayer, you know the state of every heart and life. I pick up on some things in the Spirit as you share, but you know everything. You know what they're facing today and yesterday. Yes, what they face, but you know tomorrow the future. Better we know the present and the past. So this morning, Father, it is so important. You know every word that needs to be spoken. Everything that needs to be done. And we don't without you, but thank God we're not without you. We depend upon the Holy Ghost this morning. And I'm just thank you now as I open my mouth. That'll be the vessel that you call me to be. Being ready and prepared for the Master's use. I'll not speak man's plans, thoughts, or ideas. Not a cute little sermon, not a poem, none of the things that are popular today, but what thus saith the Holy Ghost, what you want to say to your people. It'll minister to them directly at their point of need, and I believe as I have, they come expecting to, re to receive the day from you by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. They're going to receive this word that has within it the ability to change in all of their life forever, and as they leave here and apply it, that's what it's going to do. We believe in the last amen, they'll never be the same again. But change, challenge, and all forever. We believe above all else you'll have your way. You'll have your say. The mighty name of Jesus will be magnified and the Holy Ghost will have for you to move. The last amen, Father. You'll have got the glory, honor, and praise that you so deserve. We count it done by faith right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated, the children can be dismissed. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. We just want to follow Him today. Obey Him today. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. This is different than what's on the screen or what they have, what I gave you. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. I want to say something to you this morning about the Holy Ghost. It applies to me as much as it does you. It applies to us all. But another people in this place that you're facing great opposition. You're facing great obstacles. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of how many? All of them. Amen? What's impossible with God? Nothing. All things are possible to him that believeth. You're sitting here. You have breath in your body. You got this word from God. And now I'm going to say some things this morning by the Spirit of God. You're going to apply it, and you're going over. If I didn't give you any, any words this morning, but these, this is what the Holy Ghost told me on the front row. You can make it. I said you can make it. Yes. Amen? Yes. Not only can you, if you'll trust God, you will. But you're going to have to trust Him. You're going to have to depend upon Him. If you wasn't here, go back and get Brother Carlos's message from Wednesday night. It'll help and encourage you as well. But I pray this one does the same because it's all the Word and all the Holy Ghost. 1 Peter 4 verse 12 says this. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some, some strange thing happened unto you. So when you get in the fire and you get in the furnace, maybe like the three Hebrew children. What's the Bible say about it? It's kind of like some of these other scriptures says, count it all joy. <laughs> yeah. You can do it by faith, but it's a lot easier said than done. Amen. Amen. 
And it's easy to tell other people to do it. But it works when you do it. He said, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. So don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Right? Why? Well, he tells us, and this, this doesn't go along with sufferings, doesn't go along with opposition in our natural minds. He said, Rejoice. When you face the fiery trial, the last thing you want to do is rejoice. The last thing you want to do, and I don't mean the spirit, I mean in the natural, is celebrate. You want to praise God on Sunday morning in church and look like the Lord has done, and they're singing along those lines, and you can think about all that God's done, and you're not facing nothing major today, but when you've been through the fire, through the water, and now you're in a hotter fire or in a deeper water than you was before, you've got to make a decision. Amen? We don't praise God because everything's good. We praise God because He's good. For the Lord's good and His mercy endures forever. I'm here to tell you right now, the Word of God works. I'm working it right now. I didn't want to say none of these things, but the Lord changed my whole message down there. Standing on the front row. You might can tell I was a little bit out up here earlier. I don't know if anybody even noticed. I was trying to get my words straight. But I've been dealing with some physical things, and I, I'm a private person. I don't tell anybody anything. I tell all these stuff, but I'm not looking for attention, looking for none of those things. But I've been in ministry since, full-time ministry since 2000, and the greatest physical attacks and opposition that I've had before I preached was today. This morning. It was either calling Miss Lordy to come get me and take me to the emergency room or work the word that we preach. Like I said, anybody can preach it. Anybody can do it when it feels good. When everything's going all right. But when you can't see because the pain's so high and so many things is going on and it's been going on for days. You say, well, you mean the word don't work? The word don't work until you work it. It's working right now. Because I'm not at the hospital. I'm not knocking nobody going to the hospital. I'm not knocking you going to the doctor. But the devil wants to stop you. He wants to shut your mouth. Because he knows what's on the other side of your faith confession. He knows that when you trust God, you're going over, not under. You're the head, not the tail. See, it's good, fine, and dandy when you're standing up. Oh, packed out, thriving, flourishing, and growing. In Jesus' name, when the devil shows up and he says, I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. you got to make a decision. What are you going to do? This is the word that you preach. This is the word that you teach. This is the word that you're reading. You look devotions on Monday morning do they work when you do them when you stand on the word of God see it doesn't matter what the devil wants to do it's just like in Matthew chapter 4 starting in verse 1 Jesus was led up with the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted to the devil that's an unpopular message but there's some things in your life that's ahead of you that you got to be tested and you got to be tried and you got to trust God so you'll be ready but when you stand on the word in the storm you're going over and not under it doesn't matter how many times the devil comes we stand up and we say today I don't think that should be a word. You either tell the truth or you lie. I don't like exaggeration. But I could have went to the hospital this morning, I'll be honest with you. And I ain't been to the hospital or mercy in many a year. But I'm doing rather good right now. You say you just under the anointing. But I wouldn't be under the anointing right now if I hadn't acted on the word. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be under the anointing if I just went by my feelings this morning. I wouldn't be under the anointing. I wouldn't be preaching the gospel. And the devil would have had his way. Amen. See, thank God Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. God told me in his word right there a little bit further in chapter 5. Be sober, be vigilant, because you're adversary of the devil. Walking about, right? Seeking as a royal life. Seeking who may devour. You need to let him know, I'm not one that you can devour. I'm one that's going to stand on the word. I'm going to do those things I've both seen and heard. I know what God has said. See, God speaks to you and tells you things and shows you things in the Word by the Spirit. Those times in our prayer closets are awesome, but then you get out here and you have to live it. Amen. Every day. Amen. I have people all the time talking about other people say, oh, that's what I, I know. I would do this if I was them. No, you do not. Amen. You're not them and you're never going to be them. You better focus on what you need to be doing for yourself right now. Amen. You better stand on the Word. Yes. Amen. It's always easy to figure out what the other person should do. But he said, rejoice. Yes. Jesus said back that Matthew 4. He said, it is written every time. 
And you get down to the latter part of 11 or so there. It says the devil leaveth him. And the angel of the Lord come and minister to him. When did the devil leave? And when did the angel of the Lord come and minister? Three times! Don't stop because it doesn't look like or seem like it work. doesn't work when you speak the word. You say, I tried this for a little while. You don't try the word. You give God your everything. This is who I am. You know, I don't knock nobody. We love everybody. But people come around sometimes. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're hooked up. Sometimes they don't. Get hooked in. Amen. Get hooked in with Jesus. Get hooked in with God. Get hooked in with the company. Yes, amen. People say, oh, I'm here for now. I'm here until the rapture comes back. Unless God leaves me to do something different. Amen. I ain't going nowhere. Amen. 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 What's the Word of God say? How many things are possible? Oh. To who? Him that believeth, there's things with man, Mark 10, 27, that may be impossible. But with God. Do you know God's with you today? Yes. I was writing that article this, uh, the other day, Thursday, I believe, about victory in Jesus. Think about the whole song. Oh, and it, but it's, it's way more than a song. It's the Word of God. We have victory in it through Christ Jesus. My God, we were desperate. We had no hope. We had no future. Destined for hell. Death out in the grave. But God out of His love made a way when there seems to be no way. Nobody's going to hell today except for those that choose to reject the way. Amen. That's the only reason people's going to hell. They reject the way. The way is Jesus. Amen. Aren't you on the way to heaven this morning? If not, you can be. Don't procrastinate those kind of decisions. Make the decision now. He said in 1 Peter 4, verse 13, But rejoice! <clears throat> Inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Now, if you rob the bank and get in trouble, that's that's not necessarily you doing something in the name of the Lord. You understand that, right? But when you step out to obey God, you know I'm going to say this, and this is not a statement of doubt and unbelief, but I found this out. I thank God there's a real God that will put me over. But I want you to understand something. When you get real with God, you'll find out. There's a real devil too. And he's not going to just let you do it. You're going to have to find your authority. You're going to have to walk in your authority. And you're going to have to do it where 1 John, 1 Peter chapter 5 says, we just read verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion. A lot of people are days in a kind of a sleepy state. You can't be like that. You've got to be awake spiritually. You've got to be aware of what the Holy Ghost will say. You've got to know what the Word says. I guess we could say you get to. But the devil is a roaring lion walketh about. He's seeking who he may devour. Verse 9. What does it say? Whom resist. You, you know what that word means. And I've looked it up so many times. I remember. I don't have any notes for this message today. Other than you can make it. And I'm going to come right back to this. But the Holy Ghost has had me to do this because He said there's people in this place that you tried and you failed and you tried and you failed and you come to the place where you question, can I even make it? The Holy Ghost, God, the Holy Ghost is saying today, you can make it. But when you, you come to that place where it seems like it's almost over. And I'm sure that Daddy was indoctrinating Scriptures in us and he was doing it without saying it. But we was taught you don't quit. Amen. You don't quit. The only way you quit on this side is when you die. That's the way we was raised. I tell you, they always wanted to know the hall of the brakes and stuff when I worked out in the secular world of Blumenthal and different things. And, and I always had a different view because Daddy always said you took a break and you got done working. Amen. That's what he believed. He wasn't worried about two smoke breaks and two melly other breaks. You got done when you got done. But you didn't quit because you was focused. <coughs> Looking unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, the author and finisher of our faith, we thank God the work He's begun inside. He's well able to bring to fruition complete, completion. But what are you going to say when the devil hollers no and tries to bring to situations and circumstances when everything says no way? I go back to Abraham in Romans 4. You remember what he said? He said several things. But one of the things he refused to do I'm going to read that tonight. Let's consider any contradictory circumstances. He said here in verse 8, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Resist means to oppose. 
It means, and I'm not talking about to people, but it means when He comes up and says it's over, you say, shut up in Jesus' name. When He said, I'm going to have my way in your life, get out of here in Jesus' name. My life is submitted unto God, James 4, verse 7. I resist the devil. I know what you have to do. Get out of here. You can't have my life. You can't have my family. You can't have the church. It belongs to God. I'm just overseeing the caretaker under, under His authority. Jesus is the chief shepherd. I'm the under shepherd. You don't have a place there. And, and to my knowledge, nobody's trying to do anything in the church. He's just having me use an example. As I said today, today is walking by faith even in my life in 20-some years. I sat in the office this morning. And I don't know that I read more than one scripture. I sat in there with my head back in my chair and the eyes closed. And the lights off. Because I couldn't stand to even see the light. The pain was so intense. You said, well, what did you do? Well, I told you I had two decisions. I just give up and let y'all have a little testimony service and you pass the run to the hospital. And you say, well, that would have been all right, but who would have won? I said, but who would have won? Does that glorify God? That's what Romans will do. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Resist him. Oppose. He's going to come, but I oppose him in Jesus' name. I offer resistance. I offer opposition. People say, you don't know what the devil's doing in my life. What are you doing to him? You say, he's at the house. Don't let him be there. He's in my family. No, no, no. I know you can't control adult members of your family, but at your house, you understand. Well, under your authority, don't allow the devil to have his way in any life, in area, any, excuse me, any area of your life that's under your authority. Right? Let me read a little bit further before we go to Romans 4. We resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brother than in the world. Now, concerning afflictions, it doesn't matter if it's in the Hebrew or the Greek, and there's some variation of the different of the definitions. But one of the words that even cross over for afflictions is pressure. Pressure. You know, the enemy can bring some pressure in your life. Anybody ever been there? Don't say not because a lot of people tell on themselves. It's kind of like when you start talking about persecution. And people say, I don't understand why you have all them problems like you do. I don't understand. Why, why don't people, why don't certain ones like you? Why do they oppose you? Why do they do all these things? And they don't do it to me. I must be doing something better. Well, the Bible says all the live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Yeah. If you live ungodly, you don't get a lot of persecution. If you fit in with the world, they just think you're one of their own. But when you say it's for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. The devil don't like it. The people that's walking with him don't like it. But it doesn't matter who likes it. You're in a time and place and a season in this earth that you're living in. But in our lives, we have to be a church and a people full of the Word and the Holy Ghost that truly says and means that for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Right? Amen. And we could go back to Joshua 24 there and read before and after. And we'll see. He also told the rest of them, we love you. You guys can do what you want to do. But as for me and my house, this is what we're doing. This isn't up for vote. The decision has been made. The destiny. We're not aimless. The destiny is secure. My eyes are on the prize. I'm forgetting what was back here. Forgetting those things which are behind, Paul said in Philippians 3, 13 and 40. Looking, reaching, stretching, it says in the Greek, towards those things ahead. I'm headed over to upward. And I know people say it so cutely all the time and it's very foolish when they say it because they don't know what they're talking about. But I mean business when I say that I'm going to live my life out upon the earth and when I get to heaven, I'm going to heal. Here, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Now, people say that at every funeral, even the people that die and go to hell because they reject Jesus, they say, oh, when they got there. No, but we're going to do it. Yes. We're going to do it. Amen. It's not so just because the preacher lies at somebody's funeral. But we're going to do it. We're going to seek God. We're going to walk with God. It doesn't matter what takes place. It doesn't matter what the cost is. You remember Jesus said, and he was dealing with about this this past week, because I'm going to deal with some things for a little bit now. He said, if any man come after me, you better mean business when you say I'm coming after you every day. You better mean what you say. He said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And I don't know how much I've talked about this or talked about it, Y'all know I get off on it sometimes because this was been in my heart for about five or six years. He said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take his cross. You know what the cross is? You need to have a rope in your Bible. If you don't, the cross is the cost. 
The cross is the cost. You say, what does that mean? Because I've got my eyes on Jesus and I'm walking with Him. And I'm saying, I don't care what anybody says or does. I love everybody, but it's for me and my house. I'm going to walk with the Lord. It doesn't matter what comes of this world that may look good or seem good, may even seem promotion. I try to teach my family this because people say, well, this could be better and that could be better. We could do this and we could do that. No. You weigh everything with your eyes fixed on Jesus in the Word. And, and when you weigh this thing and it does not line up with the will of God, you place it on the cross. It doesn't matter if somebody else is celebrated as a promotion. If it's not the will of God, you lay it down. I said it before. I heard a minister say it years ago. Many people say Jesus died on the cross. Obviously, we teach, preach, and believe that. But if you follow him through the garden, the truth of the matter is, he died in the garden before he ever got to the cross. When he said, Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will. Blood, sweats, drops of blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak. Right? Go to Romans 4. No, stay right there. 1 Peter 5. He said, because you're resisting steadfast in the faith, verse 9, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, this is cursing as well, after you have suffered a while, you know how Jesus learned obedience of the Bible's true? Through the things that He suffered. Now, you don't have to suffer sickness and disease. I'm not saying that. But you will face attack and opposition from the enemy on every front. And you're going to have to determine what you're going to do when you face that opposition. You're going to have to determine, does the Word work or does it not? And you even have, nobody's done anything to me whatsoever. But I've been studying other people's lives and even listening to some of you guys. If you're not careful, you will have people that will cater to you and understand when you lay down and love when you need to get up. I remember Dr. Hagen telling all those stories when he had that incurable blood disease, 16, 17 years old. How old it was before he was healed on the deathbed. And he said he would go to school. And they all, even the women teachers there, he said they didn't even want to have him in their class because they were scared he was going to die in the class. And he said even the, the principal would call him up to the, the principal's office and just let him know, we know your state, we know your situation, and he's endeavored to believe God. We know your state, we know your situation, we know what you're facing and dealing with. We've got it from the doctors, straight from the doctors. If you don't want to go to this class, don't go. If you, don't, if you want to leave school early, leave early. And he said a healed man would take go to his classes. A healed man would be where he's supposed to be. He said, but they, in, the, in, in endeavoring to cater to him, they weren't trying to hurt his faith, but they didn't understand. Endeavoring to cater to him, what, could, what would have happened? He just sat down and missed out on his healing. But he said, no, I'm going to school. I'm going even to study all for the days out. I'm not just going home early. Because I'm standing on the Word in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. It's been made too easy to sit down and lay down today. You need to get up. Amen. I said you need to get up. And that's not just a natural thing. It's not just by your own strength and muster. No, no. faith is an act. Yes, it is. I said it's an act. Faith that doesn't involve an act is not, is not Bible faith. You go and you confess and you believe that you receive when everything you confess and you believe and you receive is either look like it's further away than ever before, further down than ever before, or further behind you than ever before. But the Word works. Amen. It works. Yes. Many people today, we read that earlier in Galatians 6, verse 9, don't grow weary in well-doing. You'll reap in due season, in due season, in due season. If you faint not, don't give up on your faith, don't give up on the Word, and don't give up on God because He never has nor ever will give up on you. After you've suffered a little while, make you perfect, which simply means mature, establish, strengthen, settle. I want you to go to Romans 4. This is one of my favorite passages, and it's actually, I don't know if you got room in your Bible. I don't have enough room in my Bible to write, but I keep writing and keep writing. I just bought a new Bible. It's a note-taker Bible. King James has got margins on both sides of each page, so I can make some more notes than what I got in this Bible. But I got it at the top of my Bible here. You just write these down if you want to, and if not, that's your business. The formula of faith from Abraham is laid right out here in Romans chapter 4, starting in verse 17. And we'll look at it. Romans 4, it's four different things. 1, 2, 3, 4. As it is written, Romans 4, 17, I have made thee a father of the many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things just like they are. 
Call us those things that be not as though they were. How are you doing financially today? How would you answer that? That's awesome you say it right now, but when you're sitting at the house over lunch, how would you answer that? That's what makes a difference. When you get in the car with your wife. Oh, they took up the tithe and off from this morning at church. See, when you get a hold of the Word, you say, I thank you, Father, for an opportunity to give. I thank you, Father, for an opportunity to sow my seed in the good, fertile soil. And I thank you not only have I sow my seed in the good, fertile soil. If the Word's true, and I know it is, where I sow, I reap. I expect the harvest. I expect the miracle. I expect the provision because I sowed the seed and the Word of God cannot fail. It's impossible. And sometimes I say it just like I do now because I'm under the anointing. Sometimes I say it and there's so many things going on and you've got so many things, so much pressure, I might not be up here preaching, but it don't matter how you say it. Say it. Speak the Word. When the church is doing great, Seemingly, eyes, whatever you want to call it. I know spiritual all that matters. But, but no matter how the church looks or seems, I say the same thing every time. All the time. Every time. I don't think nobody else can pull the cameras up, but if you pull the cameras up, I hear you think that's crazy. Miss Farley already knows I'm crazy, so it doesn't matter. She still loves me anyway. I talk the whole time that I, I park out trying to walk up here. High. Built. Complete. Full, thriving, flourishing, growing. Word has free course. Holy Ghost has freedom to move. Life's being changed forever. Amen. Lost, healed. Lost, excuse me. Same thing. Lost, saved. Right, that's the same thing. Yeah. Salvation. All inclusive work. Lost, saved. Empty filled. Right. Thank God for the prodigals. Coming back home. Said we'd be a church. One of the things the Holy Ghost said. We'd be a church and a people. But you see, many of the God of the fellowship come back in their walk, be more vibrant and hungry than ever before. Amen. And we've seen that, we're going to see it even more. Amen. It's awesome that God has said that, but you've got to hook up with what God says and act, don't it? Yes. Be crazy. You might not be walking up to the church. I hope you're joining confession with us. You might be walking up to your house. Yes. Sometimes people might think you're mad if, they, if you talk, you're talking to the devil. I just tell him what he is. You're a liar. You're defeated. You're not going to have your way here. You remember they used to talk about with Brother Hagin. Dr. Hagin used to talk about some of these individuals and demonic and witches and stuff. And, and they did. He said he had other ministers. That, that he was in, in one particular town and, and the, the witches or witch doctor, whoever it was, they was going to put a spell on him. And the other preachers were scared. They were scared. Wouldn't you be glad if your pastor was scared? And I'd find another church if I was you. But he, he said they were scared. And he said, they said, Brother Hagin, you better not get up and say that. They're going to put a spell on you. He said, I just said, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah. ha, That's so funny. Tell them I double dog dare them to put a spell on me. And the other preachers, oh, my God. It's amazing how many Christians are more scared of the devil than to do fear, respect, and honor God. Amen. Amen. We've been given the name of Jesus. We've been given the power to write of attorney. When you and I are walking in fellowship with God, use that name that's above every name. Use that commanded power in the name of Jesus. We can stop the devil in his tracks. Amen. You don't worry about any kind of curse or any kind of spell. You can talk about all this it's all the time, about all these generational curses that's coming down through families that have 14 week Bible studies on them. Take authority in Jesus' name and go on living for God. Amen. People want to talk about stuff. So I'm going to go to Ancestry.com. Let me tell you something. All your family that wasn't saved, they have the devil. It doesn't matter who likes them. It doesn't matter if you go to a church where they lie to you. There's two families, of God and of Satan. Amen. You got both. I remember this years back, Brother Randy's talking about it. He said, if you got good sense, and Brother Randy spent over 10 years of his life in, in prison. He said, if you got good sense, you don't go back searching too far with your family. Yeah. He said, you find some things you wish you had. He said, you find some preachers, but you'll find some murderers too. <laughs> and some thieves and some other stuff. Then you just be more mixed up than ever before. It's kind of like people are always searching for the problem. I got to know what the problem is. I got to know what the problem is. The problem is the devil. It's only really one or two things. It's you or the devil. Yeah. It's your flesh or the devil. Right. right? Our three legitimate biblical enemies are the world, the flesh, and the devil. Right? Love not the world, the things of the world. The devil, we take authority over him. I don't consider the devil your greatest enemy. Perfect. 
That offends people. But from my observation in your life and mine, to me, your flesh is your biggest issue. I'm just being straight with you. The biggest issue that you have, even with the life and power, and, and, and this, is, this, is, this is Pastor Jason's daughter, from the Word and by the Holy Ghost, so the biggest issue that people have with not seeing the life, the victory, all that God has for them is the flesh, because you are a spirit, and the very moment you made Jesus Lord and Savior your life, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Right? Many of you come into your soul. Your spirit's not your problem, reality. But you are you have a soul, right? Soul's made up of your mind, will, and emotion. Many people fail because their minds are unrenewed. That's true. They let their they have a feeling, they act on it, and it contradicts the word of God. So it takes them away from God instead of towards God. But even many Christians will say, Well, I know what the word says, and I go to church at RLC and Pastor Jason studies the word, and I know what the scriptures say. So you got the spirit part, and you got the word, you got your mind renewed, you still got this flesh. Then it don't matter if I give you a hundred scriptures this morning. If you pull out John on the road and somebody cuts you off, it still wants to jump up. It still wants to act out. You know, you get the spirit, get your mind renewed, you won't have any blue Mondays anymore. There's, there's no such thing as, 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 as a spirit filled walking in the word Christian. And I, I don't mean to not, this is all the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all might wish I went to the hospital before I went done. But you ought not to not be a Christian until you get your coffee in the morning either. So what's that's got to do with 100% one thing, flesh? Yeah. i got to take care of my little flesh before you talk to me. Don't you talk to me. Don't you bother me. He said, why would you say that's the biggest hindrance? Because I know what Dr. Hagen teaches and I'm 100% for it. Even the book on tongues. Be in the doorway to the supernatural understanding. But a fellow that is, is six or seven hundred something pages, it's still worth reading. But I've used this title. I've read it. But he's it, it, read it in part one time and again halfway. But Watchman Nee made this statement. And the title of his book, he said, The Breaking of the Outer Man to Release the Life in the Inner Man. Many Christians, it would be defined biblically as carnal. I know that. First Corinthians 3, among other places. But many Christians, they have the life of God inside of them, but it's chained down. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, it's, the life of God's not allowed to come out. Because they're not controlled by the Spirit. Their minds aren't renewed with the Word. But if you bring that flesh into subjection, don't let it do what it wants to do, it opens the door for everything inside of you to come out. It's there. Do you know we don't really need to live for Christ? Does that mess you up? What's Galatians 2 26? I am crucified with Christ. Never listen to me. Don't cut me off because I said that. The Holy Ghost showed me this just a few weeks ago. A lot of times you struggle and you walk with God. You struggle and be like Jesus. I'm trying to be more like him every day. Well, he said Galatians 2 verse 20. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. So I'm crucified. Smith Oglethorpe said, the Holy Ghost puts all these things together for me because I could do it myself. He said, the greatest hindrance, this is over in Romans 6, the greatest hindrance to man or woman walking with God is unyieldedness. So listen to me before you cut me off and run out of the church because of what I just said. I want you to see something. He said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, I looked this up myself. I searched out. Live for Christ, live under Christ. I searched this stuff out this week. He said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but what? Christ. What I really need to do, try to live more like Jesus or let the Jesus that lives inside of me out. Which one do I need to do? I mean, this is, this is deeper than what we've done. I understand that. But the reality of it is, it's really simple. It's so simple that most people miss it. I've been trying to attain to be, I, I haven't been doing this, I'm going to say that, but many people have been trying to attain to, to be somebody and to be like somebody, but the reality of it is you need to figure out, this is why you hear me talk about surrender all the time, come to the end of yourself. A dead man wakes up in the morning, he doesn't have any plans. It'll put a new spin on your life. He said, I like this and I like that. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. He said, well, all of these things, are they not fine? Can I do all these things that I like? It's according to, if they interfere with me. Who lives in you? Many things are good. Many things are placed in this earth for you to richly enjoy. And I don't disagree with any of that. But true life is not when you keep trying harder than you ever tried before. 
It's when you realize you can't come to the end and let the Jesus Christ that lives in you by the Holy Spirit come out. I hope that made sense to you. I hope you catch it in your spirit. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, is that not what you can read it for yourself? I've been quoting it for about eight or ten years, so I know what it says. But I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless, uh, yet Christ, where? Where's Christ liveth in? Where's the Holy Spirit? Greater is He that maybe I can attain to and get one day. No, greater is He this. He's already there. When I go deer hunting, Jesus is in me. When I go to Walmart, Jesus is in me. He ain't a lot of people. Up, he's in me. It'll test your Jesus when you take him to Walmart. Y'all understand that, that I, you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. I believe and I know you've been given the Holy Ghost to make you like Jesus. In both character, which is the fruit of the Spirit, and in power, which is the anointing of the Holy Ghost, to accomplish the will, plan, and purpose of God. But where does Jesus Christ live? By the Spirit of God who lives in you. Now listen to these guys all my life. And they talk about sin. They talk about all this different kind of stuff. And they talk they, they would they talk like they don't understand people that would struggle with different sins. And I, I do understand people who struggle with different sins because for years I struggle with things myself. And I, I, I'd hear them and Dr. Hagen and D.L. Moody and different ones say, well, you want to go on a dance hall on Saturday night? If you're a Christian, just go ahead and do all the dancing you can enjoy. That's what he's saying. And I'm thinking, I know a lot of people that go to church on Sunday and they enjoy dancing all the time. And it ain't all Christian like. Most of the church is closing up to the world. But when you come to the end and you get serious, not only is the devil real, that's true, but we've been given authority over him. When we walk by faith and trust God to do in and through me, because really and truthfully, this life that I now live isn't the life that Jason's living. Or has Jason, in a great sense, come to the end of himself and surrendered his life to Christ? And we're supposed to do that. That's why your churches want to know. You're supposed to do that on the day you gave Jesus your life and made him Lord and Savior. But that's also where you got church because you've got to mature and grow spiritually just like you do physically. So you should, we all are still learning these things, right? Daily, He should be the Lord of my life. I heard Wigglesworth say repeatedly, if it's all of me, it's none of God. And it, it, I, don't, I never need to look at it again. Some of this stuff just sticks. I don't want to say it in my head, it's in my spirit. But of course, you're probably still here. But if it's all of me and I'm doing life my way, my terms, number one, you'll know if it's, that's the case because it'll be a mess. But, but, but it's none of God. If it's some of me, then it can be some of God. But my goal is to come to the place where it's none of me at all. It's the goal. And, and again, I'll be honest with you, if there's a problem with what I'm saying, it's because it's too simple and easy. It's too, it's too easy. The devil likes to complicate things in your life. He give you all these reasons why you can't do it, but there's one called the way, the truth, you say, I want to be holy. I want to be pure. I want to Look at this. We'll come back to Romans 4. Look at this real quick. This, this stuff is stuff that we need to know. I've been studying stuff for years that I have not preached because I hear so much falsities and so many things that are so erroneous and, and, and false doctrine even in the body of Christ that, that we do not want to say things that are wrong, right? Because we don't want to hurt people. We want to help people. Jesus said, or, or Paul, the Holy Ghost through the Apostle Paul about Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It's one of my favorite places. 26. See, it's even like this morning, and it's always there. You've got to see this. And, and again, I, I, as, as much as I do not like to talk about myself, especially anything that I do, everything that you need, you have. You just don't know it yet. That's why you've got to get in the Word. That's why the, you heard Dr. Hagin talk about for years praying the Ephesians 1 and 3 prayers. The reason that he said pray those prayers was none of those prayers are praying for God to give you something. He was praying for the church at Ephesus and all of us as Christians to have, get a revelation of what we already possess. He 
said in verse 26, You see your calling, brother, and how that not many wise men after the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. It goes back to some of the stuff we've been talking about. The reason that is because a lot of people think they big stuff and hot stuff. That's not how you walk with God. You come to realize I'm nothing without Him. Nothing. You come to realize that I might have lived my life up to this day, but as I really see who Jesus is in me, I have a good life. That's why you get confused sometimes if you're not careful with people that fight and don't surrender their lives to God. You, you can't do anything any better. There's nothing better. It, it's, it's a life. It's the Zoe life of God. It's, 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 it, I don't even know how to explain it. It's the life that only comes from God. The life that God possesses, but thank God. And through Christ Jesus, He's given it to us. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You ever notice how God uses people? That's why this morning, as I said that at the beginning, you say, well, I, I, you said, by the Holy Ghost, I can make it, and it looks like everything else in my life, there's no way I've tried and tried and tried and failed. Yeah, you tried and you failed. Why don't you quit and let Christ that lives in you live the life of God through you, and you'll rise up and be who God's called you to be? Amen. Quit! Amen. One of the greatest obstacles that I had to overcome in my life, and it's a good thing if it's used right now, was just be faithful. Because some of the greatest things it was an obstacle to me walking with God. Now faithfulness is biblical. Faith and faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. But that's as you abide in the vine and it's what He does in and through you. But when you get out trying to be faithful to do the right things on your own, it's a life of misery. And it's a life of continual failure. But I was always taught just be faithful. And I can see today Benny Hinn talking about, he said, why do you talk about all these people? Because God told me several years ago, he said, study behind other people as I lead you to. He said, but there's a message that I'm going to bring through you to this generation that they've lost. He said, if you only focus on studying behind everybody else, you miss out on what I've called you to do. We've got to get back to walking with Jesus. We've got to get back to knowing who He is in me. And, 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 and it started out several years ago. I've got an awesome three messages from this morning. And this ain't not a one of them. But Benny Hinn being shook, he said by Catherine Kuhlman, and she said, Benny, you have to die. You know, it don't make any natural sense, but that's the thing the Lord told me before I ever heard that said. He said, it's time to die. To who? Not die to Christ. Never go to hell. To my will, to my way, to my plan. So I can be so careful if you're a complainer. It's all about you. What do you complain about? You complain, and you grumble, and you gripe when things aren't your way. It's not supposed to be your way. He is your way. He's the way. He's the way. No fussing. No fighting. That's why the Bible says the Christian, in was it, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 22 or 3 of that, don't strive. We don't quarrel. We don't fight. Christians don't fight. How do you find, How are you not in unity if you got the same Jesus I got? How does that happen? Somebody's got to get in the flesh. It's the only way. That's why the flesh, you to the flesh. Strife is the manifest presence of Satan. That's why if it's at your house, the door's open and the devil's in there somehow. Shut it. You can shut it. You can stop it. Do you know you can walk with God? Do you know you can be everything God's called you to be? You just got to learn some secrets. It's not about you. And it might not be everything you've heard your whole life. I'm crucified with Christ, but yet I live. How does a person that is crucified live? That's dumb, naturally. I'm crucified with Christ. You stop speaking to people. Well, if I don't let them know, nobody will let them know. Yeah, they will. Jesus is my defender. I don't have to defend myself. People say, oh, so and so said this. So be it. God bless them. I don't care. They will eat what they sow. You said they're digging you a grave. Well, my God said this one. The pit they dig for me, they're following themselves with the Bible says. I'm not messing with them. I'm not their judge. Let them go. You don't have to defend yourself anymore. You don't. All the insecurities, they just, they melt. Because you no longer, well, this is going good or that's going good. Or the church is this way. Or people's that way. Or people's acting right. Or they're not. None of those things matter. That you don't cause problems. I don't mean that. But you're not moved by everything because you're crucified into those things. 
You're just simply letting the life of God. I go back to what Spurgeon said. They tried to get him, and I said, this is a few weeks ago. Big old group, because he knew the scriptures, and big old group tried to get him. They were the gospel defense council or coalition or something. And see, this stuff, the Holy Ghost, I, 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 I appreciate it if you think I am, but I'm not this smart. The Holy Ghost has to bring all this stuff together for me. I've been seeking for a long time to be able to get even to where I am at today, and I've got a long ways to go. Don't you? But the Gospel Defense Coalition, whatever the group was named, was Gospel Defense something, and, and they were in defense of the Gospel, and they was always going around getting a group of scholars up arguing about the Bible. This goes exactly what I'm talking about. They was arguing about the Bible, trying to prove the Bible's true. And they, Spurgeon was a learned scholar. I don't know what kind of background or theology he had, but he knew the Word. People still share all the quotes and stuff today. But they asked Spurgeon, they said, will you please come and join our defense council? Because if you're on there, they will have nothing to say. They can't, they can't upend your argument. And he said, no, I won't come join your group. No, I won't come join your gospel defense coalition. He said, the gospel I need defending. He said, you don't defend the lion. You just let him know. That's what he said. As I go with Galatians 2 20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Christ lives in me. I'm empowered, equipped, and anointed by the Holy Ghost. See, people don't listen to me. And I, I know some of you get this because, see, I'm not the only person that's seeing God. Some of you have seen God. People want to know where the miracles are, they want to know where all the power is, they want to know where all the glory is. And in fact, we lost this. We had lost one thing it's Jesus. Now, I don't mean that we don't need the Holy Ghost because they go together. You understand? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They all got their place. And, and the only ministry agent at work in the earth today is the Holy Spirit. I understand that. He said, where's all the miracles at? We wait on the next great man to rise up. It's not a great man that's going to do miracles. It's a man that comes to the end and realizes not me, but it's Christ that lives in me. And it doesn't matter what I face. Just like Jesus walking the earth. The difference is, He said, not my will, but your will be done. And he lays everything down. And he walked this earth empowered and anointed by the Holy Ghost. And the biggest difference is, is I'm walking the earth, but instead of saying be healed, I say be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. But it doesn't come out scratching my head and saying, how are we going to do these things? How's the church going to rise up? The church is too small for the song good. It needs to come to nothing. It needs to go. I've had people to say, well, so and so's church was shut down. I would never say it to them because that'd be wrong. But inside I say, thank God. Sooner the better. Sooner the better. Lock the doors. I'd praise God if they had a chain on the door and all about it. Because it's foolishness. It's not God. It's not Jesus. It's man's ideas. When man gets smarter than God, he's in big trouble. Amen. He's in big trouble. He's in the worst. Of, that's why I try to tell you guys, and I tell you this all the time, and whoever this message is for that says that, 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 you, that you come here today and you say, yes, it's for me. And as you say, you can make it. I know this is for me. And this is the encouragement. I tell people all the time, the people that are in the best situation in their life, are not the ones that come to me or go to other people and they think they got it figured out. When you think you're in the worst situation, you're in the best situation because you're fixing to walk with Him if you'll do what's right. He said, not my will, not what I want, not what I desire. He said, what are you going to do? What are you going to be? Where are you going to go? I'm going to do what Jesus wants me to do. I want to be who He's called me to be. And I don't, personally, Jason, don't want to go to Florence. But I don't care where He wants me to go. I want to do what He says do. And do it in the way He says do it. And give glory to the Father and the Son by means and power of the Holy Ghost. But there's all kinds of, all kinds of scratching. And you see, in letting go, you can see on the floor, the Christian's scratching trying to, you know, like in the old days when the Holy Ghost was really in the church. I, I didn't ever see it. I didn't ever pay attention. But they say on the back of the pews, they said you can see the fingernail marks. Because when the Word was being ministered by the Spirit of God, there was a draw. It wasn't man's draw. It was a Holy Ghost draw. He was dealing with the Spirit of man. And in order to stay in the pew, he or she had to hold on for dear life, which is not the right answer. Because when you let go is when you gain dear life. Not when you hold on. See, you're not in the best place that you've ever been in the day if you think that you can just make it another day. Quit. Give up. Surrender. Realize, God, I can't. 
not as if. But all things are possible to him that believeth. I remember, and people say, this is for somebody here, if it's only for one person. People say, yeah, but I'm not where you are. You might not be. But there's other people that I don't know where they are. I remember when I first got serious with God. Have all kind of bump and jump stuff need to be straightened out in my life. I remember. Today I can sit down and people I'm known for this actually more than people know because I don't ever tell anybody. But people that ask me different questions because they know. If I don't know the answer, I can find it. But I'm the same person that when I got serious with God. I remember going down to the clubhouse and my daddy who was my pastor, he said, take your Bible and take your notebook and take your pen and get serious with God, and that's where you start. I took my Bible. I took my legal pad. I was going to be Mr. Study to show thyself approved. One of the God of workmen that needed not to be ashamed to come out of here, a mighty giant. And I took my Bible, and I took my notebook down, and when I left, it was just as blank as when I started. Mm -hmm. But I figured something out. And you'll see this in people in every area of their life. If you mean business, you don't care the cost. If you get serious about something, it doesn't matter. You're all in. You're all in. There's no comparison. None. I, I do things as an example. If I live to be 110 years old, when I die, I'll be married to Lord Lynch. Just unless she runs off and leaves me. And if she tries to run off and leave me, I'm going to chase her. Yeah. It's like the old fellow used to say. He said, you know, his wife got mad at him. She's packing up all her stuff. Got her suitcase on the bed, packing everything up. He went to the closet, got a suitcase out, filled it on the bed, started packing up. And she said, what are you doing? He said, well, wherever you go, I'm going to. We're going together. He said, if you pack it, I'm packing too. And he said, well, there's different. I know different people's got different wills. I understand that. But I'm just saying, when you get committed, you don't care how much it costs. People say, I can't hear from God. Go somewhere, shut the door, and lock it, and don't come out till you do. Don't come out 15 minutes and tell somebody you were serious and you tried. Because I'm, I'm a personal testimony, an example. You can start not having a clue what to do. My daddy would teach people how to study and pray. And I would help any of you guys. But his way of studying and praying, I still got it in my office. It didn't work for me when he gave it to me, and it don't work today. I never could study and pray like he could. Ever. Whether it's a plus or a minus or a vice versa, I don't know. I never could follow his plan. It never worked for me. But I didn't quit. I didn't quit. And I determined, and you can determine, that this is not an option. This is it. See, this is this mess about it's 1152 and Jesus is Lord of my life until 12 o'clock. That ain't the gospel. That ain't, that ain't church. It's not the gospel. So you trying to keep us long? No. But I say like Keith Moore said, it ain't 12 o'clock so y'all can start running. Keith Moore said he sat one of Brother Higgins meeting with his hair on the earth. And he was sitting there doing it. He said, I was sitting there thinking. He said, Brother Hagin, he said, you know, he got to go. He just keep on going. He could preach all night. What I look at it is notes. But he just kept on going and kept on going and kept on going. And he said, you know, I was just sitting there. I got to think about my sandwich I left in my refrigerator. I got to think about my Pepsi or Coke, whatever. I don't know what the drink was. But he said, I was just sitting there thinking about those things. And he said, just after a few minutes, and I'm condensing it. He said, but the Holy Ghost said to him, he said, now let me get this straight. I placed you here up under this man of God. He's ministering by the Spirit of God to you right now. And what do you want to lean for? He says, I took my head down and said, Yeah, that'll cause you to wake up. Jesus. He said, I can do without everything in this world, but I can't do without Him. It's like the religion and the gospel that you have. He said, This is what I like. That, that, that. Don't just find one you can live with, find one you can die with. See, the best day of my life, I'm going to have days of heaven on earth now, but it won't be a bad day on the day I take the, my last breath on the earth. Because if you ask from the body to be present with the Lord, and when you made Jesus Lord of your life, you know the same thing. Y'all made me preach today. Romans 4 14. No, we're the first Corinthians over. Yeah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians chapter 2, we read that. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, we read 27, halfway of God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yeah, and things which are not to bring to naught nothing things that are. Verse 29, no flesh should glory in His presence. Who must be lifted up and magnified? 
Father God, in the name of Jesus. Verse 30 needs to be a revelation that i got to wrote in my Bible identification. This is an identification scripture. As you begin to study who you are in Christ Jesus, not in and of yourself. You say, you don't know where I came from. You must not know what happened on the day you received Jesus. That's what you need to be focused on. Verse 30, of Him are you in who? 1 Corinthians 1.30, of Him are you in Christ Jesus? How do you know this is in Christ Jesus Scripture? The Bible says so, right? People are looking for wisdom. Who of God has made unto us? Jesus is my wisdom and I'm trying my best to be righteous and accepted by God. Wrong. Jesus is my righteousness. He said, oh, but you don't know the blood. I said the blood. The blood that was shed for you and me was the price that was paid. And I say this to encourage you not to hurt you. All inferiority, all insecurity, all of those things, all fear, when you get this, it will be gone. Because you know everything's all right. Christ lives in you. He's my all in all in everything. As I said earlier, I realize I can make decisions of sin to get out of the will of God, but so long as I'm walking with the Lord, He's with me everywhere I go. He'd be with me anywhere I go, but if you get into sin, you understand you grieve the Holy Spirit. You understand that. But Jesus is my wisdom. He is my righteousness. He is my what? What sanctification? What, what, what does that go along with? He said, oh my God, I can't be holy. He said, be holy as I am holy. I'm trying and trying and trying. I can't be holy. Jesus, He is my sanctification. He is my holiness. You, or you can't be holy because you're trying to be holy in your own strength. So, is, is anybody getting this this morning? Many people have been defeated by the devil because it's been them and the devil. And not Jesus and them and the devil. Yeah. Does that make any sense? This is good stuff. I just pray by the Spirit of God that you get it. I believe you are. Only because you need to know what you're talking about before you speak. Many of the things the Lord has been dealing with for the last several years, I haven't ministered for 30 minutes. Ago. But you know what you put in will come out. That work both good and bad. But sometimes I come up here and it just comes out. But it works either way. Wisdom, He's my righteousness. He's my wisdom. This I just don't know what I'm going to do. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask for it. God gives it to him liberally. Have the wisdom of God. He leads me from out where? Outside in or inside out. Yeah. He's my redemption. You know, you can redefine the whole entire church today if you just take down one scripture. I'm not on the way to hell and I have no fear of hell. I'm a child of God on the way to hell. You know, I think it was a song or something, but it's in line with the Bible. People say, I don't know what the moral holds. But it's scriptural. I know who holds the moral. Because before I get to the moral, Jesus is already there. You don't operate on a time schedule like you and I do. Right? He's my wisdom, my righteousness, my sanctification, my redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in who? That's why you get over into pride. I'm going to close on Matthew 16. You get over into pride and you see such foolishness. People talking about I'm this, I'm that, and I'm the other. If you're a Christian, you ought to be talking about Jesus. I said you ought to be talking about Jesus. Even if it's all the blessings that you have. Yeah, let me tell you what my Jesus did. Let me tell you what God's done in my life. I simply acted on and obeyed the Word. Look what He did. You give Him the glory. You give Him the presence. Nothing wrong with being blessed, but don't forget where you come from. Don't forget who brought it to you. This is too much to Matthew 16. Go to John 12. I'm that was not him. Look at John 12 real quick. This will be the news. They want to see Jesus. Oh my God, there's a message in this. Matthew 12, John 12, verse 20. Everybody wants to see Jesus. Right? That's what they tell me. I do. I like to talk to him. Don't you? 
People want to wear the presents, wear the miracles, where's all this stuff at? Same place always, but it's available unto you. We just don't do it our way and get God's blessings. It doesn't work that way. John 12, verse 20. There were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, what they want to see? Who? We would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. So they told Jesus. They were those there that wanted to see Jesus. And Jesus answered them and said in 23, The hour has come. This is a series of messages in this. That the Son of Man should be glorified. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground. And what? Die. What's he talking about? He's talking about himself. He's talking about what's fixing to take place. If he just came and lived, he would accomplish a purpose, but it would be that much instead of an eternal purpose. When he died to pay the price for you and me to purchase us back, to redeem us, is the ransom for our sins. He said, but, but not only that, we understand if we went back to Matthew 16, I'm not going back this morning, but, but we're following in Jesus' steps. Right? These are the scriptures. You study all this stuff. On, you get all your buddies and your friends and all your Facebook preachers. These aren't the ones to share. The cross is the cost. It just grieves me when I read and study behind people that accomplish the will of God in this earth. And people talk about the message and the promises and forget the life that the man or woman laid down to birth those things into this world. Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abideth alone. But if it die, what happens? And you've heard me say this, but God's plan for your life, just like the Lord Jesus Christ in this earth, is death, crucified with Christ, death to life to fruitfulness. You say, I have this great big plan. I told you we got a dumpster out here when you leave today. Throw it in. Yeah. Throw it in. You say, ah, I'm going to hold on to it. You'll come back or you'll fail. A Christian that tries to accomplish their plan in this life will be miserable till they die, and everybody around them will be miserable. If it die, death to life to fruitfulness. We try to produce much fruit. Without denying the flesh, without surrendering my will for his, without walking by faith, it doesn't work. Faith. If it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. I gotta let y'all get it going. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. These are two different words in the Greek for life. You need to know that and do good to run your Bible. He that loveth his life. This is suki, which is just a natural life that every man lives. Suki in the word, P S U C H E. But he says, He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life, what's that word hateth me? I've taught you this, so you should know it. When Jesus said, You've got to hate your mother and father, does that mean you want to kill them? What's that word mean to me? You need to know this. It'll get the Bible confusion. What's it mean? When he says you must hate your mother, your father, your brother, and your sisters, that's not a go-ahead to hate in the sense that you think. Hate is priority word. It's loveless. Right? So if you're going to have, look at this. Oh, I'm closing right now, I promise. He that loveth his life shall lose it. So the, the more you're trying to hold on to, the Bible said over Matthew 16, if you gain, you gain the whole world, lose your soul. What if you gain? Profit you nothing. Right? He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world. Lay down his life to let Christ live in him and through him. He shall keep it unto life eternal. That word life is Zoe. You know what that is? That's the life of God. Yeah. That's, that's not the same. You, you could read life and life. Uh -huh. They're opposites. They're not the same. So if you get your mind renewed of the word and you understand both of them, you can be living and not be living out. You understand that? You know how I know that? Number one, the Bible says so. Uh, number two, I try. So you can have it your way, but you can wish you had to got it that way. The life of God is immeasurable. Oh, it's so priceless. Mm. I don't even know the right words to use sometimes, but intimacy with the Father, intimacy with the Holy Spirit is just 
No price. Understand me. Father, we come before you. We love you and thank you for this day. You bless us and hand upon us your spirit leading and guide us. Who you are and all you've done. Realize, oh, that you loved us so much that you gave Jesus to die and pay the price so we can live. True life starts at surrendering our life to the Lord Jesus and making Him Lord of our life. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're hearing you say, yeah, that's me. I need you to pray with me this morning, Pastor. I've heard this message and my God, I'm not even living. I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning and let Him live in and through me. If that's you, you want me to pray with you to make Jesus Lord in your life today without hesitation. Shut your hand up boldly. Anybody in the place? Anybody? Number two, you say, I'm a Christian. I have no doubt. But I got out of fellowship. Doesn't mean that you're not saved. I'm not telling anybody if you died, you go to hell. But you might have been living life on your terms. You might, you might, before this message, you might have been doing it not even realizing what you're doing. Doesn't even have to be intentional. I know for years I did it and it wasn't even intentional. I didn't know what I'm talking about now. I didn't know it. But thank God for the teacher of the Holy Ghost. You hear today and you say, yes, that's me. I want you to pray with me. This morning, to act on the word that says, if I confess that I've sinned, God's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of my sins and all unrighteousness. I'm saying, God, your way's the right way. My way's the wrong way. I ask you to forgive me. Just like that, you're forgiven and cleansed. You're here. You can say, that's me. I want you to pray with me to rededicate my life to God. Slip your hand up boldly. Anybody in the place? God is with us. Thank God for the word. You can look up at me now. If this message, if all of you come or one of you come, just make the decision. But if this message applies to you, you say, that's where I'm at. I want you to pray with me. Don't raise your hand. Come down now and pray with you. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord. We glorify you and we magnify you. Now you see and you know in a greater measure that this is the way you're going to go. And now you're going to see me, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of God is a brand new flow. A brand new flow. A brand new flow. For I've dealt with you day in and day out. And the enemy's tried to defeat you. And he's tried to interject doubt. And at different times, it's been so hard. It's been so hard for even attacks you often before you get out this very churchyard. But this morning, you see in a greater measure, you just surrender. And by faith, you let the Lord Jesus Christ live in and through you. And now you arise up and do what you could never do alone. And you'll see even those things. Yes, you've heard this said before, but you see it one way. You'll see those things that were wrong will be righted. Because adjustments have been made, as you have seen. Now it shall be just as you've asked, and just as I told you it be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name for the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. Yeah. You'd say to yourself, I see. I see. We see. Yeah. Because we've been in that place in a measure. Oh, but it's a place that have to pursue. It's the same as the Bible says. That you labor to enter into his rest. You labor to enter into his rest and then in that place you cease from your own works and it's all my faith. For these things are inside, but I brought them back to your remembrance this morning by the Spirit of God. So now that your feet is the devil trod and you rise up, then be the man and be the woman of God that I've called you to be. For even from this day, you're going to begin to see again things that has been some time since you've seen. But it's me, and as I lead in God, follow. As I speak, listen, and it shall be as well. Just as I told you to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. For you know that you can make it. Not only can you make it, but you will. For it's been said this day, it doesn't matter if it's popular or what other people think. There's times in life, life that other people can make decisions to go contrary or opposite. That's not my plan. That won't take them or you or others into the promised land. But see, by faith, you've made the decision that in God we trust and in Him. And my faith in Him will I take a stand. So as you've took this stand 
and you put your trust in me, realizing that you can't, all things are possible to him that believeth. For even as you stand at this altar this morning with hands laid upon you, and the anointing of my spirit upon you, the presence of God upon you, I'm working and moving. I'm working and moving, and as you trust me, that scripture that was just read, you're going to see that Christ in you is your wisdom. You have wisdom, direction, and instruction. For the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by the Lord. I'm leading in God in your every step. You're not going down. You're not going to be pushed around, but you're coming up out and over. For thanks be unto God this morning, who's given you the victory through your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you don't have to see it. The devil is saying, well, look at this, look at that, look at the other. No, the Bible says, look at Jesus. So you can simply say and just be honest. Well, I don't see it, but I don't care that I don't see it. I trust Him to do what I can't do. It's done and so in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost right now saturated from their head to their toe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. For there's sometimes, oftentimes, that you tend to wonder. But I've called you to know. And when you know, you'll know. This is the way, this is the step to take. This is the decision to make and to be settled. And see, and this is brought back from many days ago, months and some years even ago, I told you as you took that step. See, back over in Luke chapter 5 with Peter and those and the Lord Jesus. They've been fishing all night, doing what they needed to do, and were not successful. They, 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 they didn't get the catch that they expected to catch. They were washing their nets on shore, going to try again later, of course, in their own strength. But Jesus showed up. So let me use your boat. What did he do? What'd you do? Peter gave. He gave. He just gave it to him. He gave it to Jesus to use. But see, when you come to that place to surrender, and not only that, you obey. You see, it doesn't matter what it looks like or seems like. I saw it. And from that day, I made a way where there seemed to be the way. For Peter went back out. He went back out. And not only did he go back out, see, this is where your testimony is at. Not only did he go back out and caught enough fish for his family. He caught enough fish for his family. He caught enough fish for a party. He caught enough fish to sell and make money. He caught so many fish, his harvest was so great, I said. His harvest was so great, I said, that their nets began to break and they had to call their partners. Look over here. Look, please come help us. Because they would have sunk. The harvest was so great. That's your testimony. So you just keep the faith today. Jesus Christ is your wisdom. You'll know I'm going to lead God and I'm going to show you the way. It's done and so in Jesus' name. Yep, the end is the beginning. The end is the beginning. And you see in a greater measure, the end is the beginning. So what do I do? And, and, and everything within you at different times is what I do. And as, as he used this example earlier, just to scratch it in the whole known. But I said, throw your arms up. I said, throw your arms up. Throw your arms up. The Bible says your redemption brought down. Throw your arms up and thank God that it's done. So I've heard that before. Yeah, but you've been trying. You've been working. Don't get wrong. You've got a part to play. But you don't make it happen in that sense. Whatever has been wrong, just thank me as right. It. Incorrect, thank me as correct. I commanded you. I don't know this is why you're up here. This is what the Holy Ghost said. I commanded you from the beginning to be fruitful and multiply. That's what I said. That's what I meant. It applies to any area of your life. Because as I said, that's just what the Holy Ghost said. I don't know why you come up here. But he said the end is the beginning. So you just throw your hands up and thank me that it's done. And then you'll see my word is true. Because I will do exceedingly abundantly above anything you even asked or thought in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The anointing, the power, and the presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You're getting it. But this is a message that you must get. And you know it. You're pulled to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back at times. More than even those that stand in front of you know. Not that you go. And not that you think that's the way to go. But you know down in your heart that this is it. A total surrender to God. 
a total surrender to the headship and lordship of Jesus. And a yielding to His Spirit is what's necessary to accomplish what I've called you to. No one in this room, and I do not say this because I'm your father. It's the first time he's ever said this to me. No one in this room knows what I've called you to. So they can't know everything that's right, everything you're equipped for. You must follow it. Yes, under your God-ordained authority, you must follow those steps. For I'm equipping and preparing you for something that you don't yet see and know. So as I prompt you down in your spirit, put your hand on your boat, on the boat. As I prompt you down right here, and you just know that's the way to go, when all reason, and even others say, no, 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 that's not it. When it's right there, you do it in love, and you will. You do it by faith, and you will. But you obey me. And I'm going to birth and bring something through you as well that you don't yet see and know. But as you've heard this message today, it's imperative that you allow me to have my way and allow my power to flow, saith the Lord. And it shall be so. The anointing. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You heard it said even this day. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. The devil said you're not this, that, or the other. You never will be for all of these different reasons. He's defeated and he's a liar in Jesus' name. That's not true. It's under your feet does he try to understand what I've called you to do Every Christian needs to understand this. What I've called you to do is not to be compared with anybody else. For I had a plan for you before you was ever born. Formed in your mother's womb. Then he's tried throughout life to get in there. Cause problems, difficulties. But see, I brought you to this place to equip you to run the race that I set before you. This morning, you possess Jesus Christ. And he possesses you. He is your wisdom and sanctification. He is your security. You allow that to come up from here on out when different feelings and different things are said. But I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. And He's got me. Christ in me. That's the hope of my Lord. Christ in me. Christ liveth in me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I say this only and reverently. There are things that you've allowed to matter to you, saith the Lord, that don't matter to me. They don't matter to me. See, the enemy's trying to bring these things in and cause this to be a hindrance to you being who I've called you to be. You say, yeah, but this is so and that's so and the other so. Who cares? I told you to cast your care upon me. I told you to look to me. I told you to trust me. 
And as you do, you'll see it'll be. Just like I told you. It's been in your heart. The devil's trying to snuff it out to us. Nothing but a little glimmer of hope instead of the light that I've given you. But see, he's defeated. And you, 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 you allow me to, to clarify by the Spirit of God. There's things that matter to you that don't matter to me, saith the Lord. These are things the enemy's trying to bring into your life. Thoughts he's trying to bring about why you can't come to the end of those things. You give those thoughts back to him, bring them into subjection to the obedience of the word. There's nothing I can't do in and through you concerning my will. As you come to the end of yourself and put your faith and trust in me and step out by faith. For you as well, by the Spirit of God, will leave this day, light on your feet, free as a bird. Of course, it's the first time I've seen it, but I see it by the Spirit now. The enemy's tried to push you down, but he's defeated in Jesus' name. And now, in the name of Jesus, you're going to put him on the run and run him around. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name. We glorify you, magnify you, and honor you. Well, I'm glad I didn't go to the hospital this morning. I know y'all probably think I was exaggerating. I thought I was going to die for a church. But thank God, Christ lives in me. Yes. And He lives in you. Your best days are yet ahead of you as you trust God. Don't let what you've been through or where you're at today, don't let it affect you. Put your faith in Him and He'll see you through. We love you. We appreciate you. God is good. Wednesday night, ready to go again. God is with us. And what kind of meeting? Is it today? Yeah, the youth has got a meeting up there. About